Uh, good evening. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be amongst a community of great service-minded individuals here at UCL on a wonderful evening. I want to start by telling you a little bit about me. My name is Shahid. Uh, I'm a first-year student studying chemical engineering here at UCL. Speaking in front of you, I'm an exceedingly grateful recipient of Dr. John Elliott undergraduate bursary. Today, I'd like to share my story of how Dr. John Elliott undergraduate bursary changed my life as an ambitious student who otherwise would still be dreaming of studying at a global university like UCL. I want to begin by stepping back in time to the years of my childhood, childhood that was full of adversities and misfortunes, and a bit of adventure too. As a child, I lived in a small village in eastern Afghanistan, together with my uncles. Although, I lived, although there was a school in the village, it was shut most of the year. The school would shut down because of heavy snowfalls in the winter, floods in the monsoon season, and because of people not paying their fees, but more frequently because of crossfires between the insurgents and foreign troops. Although I was unable to attend school to learn the fundamentals of science and mathematics, I was forming a special bond with poetry books that my cousin would hide for me in his room. Despite persistent warnings from him, I would still sneak into his room and steal my favorite book, It Was About Love, which according to him was only for adults, not 11-year-old. <laughs> the book was written in Pashto, a language that I could not read or write, despite it being my native language. Besides going to school, I, was, I would graze my cattle in the lavish green mountains that surrounded my village. And along with me, I would take the poetry book that I had stolen from my cousin. It was up in those mountains that I learned to read and write in a language that I had spoken for 10 years. Schools closed permanently in the winter of 2006, and insurgency reached its pinnacle. That's when my father, who was smuggled into the UK in 2000, decided it was not safe for us to be there any longer. My father applied for asylum here in the UK, and it took two years of struggle to be finally granted the permission to resettle in a world of peace and prosperity. I commenced my school in September 2008 in a small town of Derby. It was quite a challenge to adapt to a dramatic change in culture, language, the topography, and of course, to the British weather. <laughs> Moving to UK was the best thing ever happened to me. It gave me a chance to re-explore education, which was nothing like what I was introduced to on the other side of the planet. In fact, I formed an intense appetite for learning. I managed to do well in GCSEs in a school which has no history of producing students that get the opportunity of studying at a global university like UCL. When it came to applying to universities, I chose universities from whom I could possibly be receive supporting funding. This was the only option for me, as I belonged to a family who could not support me financially. At this point, my hope of studying at UCL was what one can describe as a broken chair with two pillars. It died and needed a third one. And thankfully, it came in the shape of an offer from UCL scholarships and bursaries department. My bursary, kindly and generously provided by Dr. John Elliott, allows me to focus on studies rather than excessive levels of employment that I otherwise would have had to rely on. It allows me to visit schools and colleges around London through STEM ambassadors program to inspire and envision the next generation of students about the opportunities and pathways that are ahead of them. It also allows me to volunteer with organizations such as Royal Society of Chemistry, the NHS, local community centers in Derby. In the community centers, I help students from disadvantaged localities with their UCAS applications and uh, assist them in writing personal statements. I was once one of these students, and I know from first-hand experience what difficulties these students endure in what is regarded as a very important phase of anyone's life. Thankfully, many, many of these students don't make it to universities because of financial restrictions. Thankfully, I did. It wouldn't have been possible without the support that all the donors have kindly and beneficently decided to give. Let me tell you, it is you who change lives, it is you who create stories, and it is you who have given me and all the scholars and awardees that are here tonight a chance to live their dreams. I used to hear that education transforms everybody who wishes to acquire it. I can safely say this holds true for me. It has made me intellectual, it has made me aware of scientific foundations that underlie what I observe. Sadly, it was an element that I was missing in my childhood. 
But thankfully, that's no longer the case. I would like to thank all of you once again for giving me a chance to not only study, but study at one of the clearly best universities in the world. There are many motivated students out there that could not access what I have been able to because of, because of impeding financial hurdles. Just like me, they should also be given a, an opportunity to thank you.